Who have I missed out? Roz upstairs. Thank you. So simplicity, and simplicity in speech, wow. This is tricky, isn't it? Politicians talk, talk a lot, don't they? We're going to hear so many millions of words over the next six weeks. Wow, it's already begun. But we know also that uh, we, we talk about words a lot. I've got a particular phrase that my wife's not over keen on. I say, my giddy aunt. <laughs> um, but I heard last night someone talk about flipping Nora. Okay, so they're kind of all these phrases, and we, and we talk about the words that we use, and they're kind of almost, not political, sorry, but uh, they've kind of got a life of their own. Um, so what's simplicity of speech all about? And I tried to think, so I came up with, uh, how do I make simplicity of speech simple? Because you can talk, you know. And my task, actually, I've had a very bad cough, so I'm trying to talk as little as possible. So my first point is... Speak less. Speak less. And there's a verse here, James 1.19. Understand this, my, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. So that's really what we're thinking about today, those first two bits. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak. So for most of us, or for some of us certainly, speak, simplicity of speech means speaking less. Now I'm aware that really applies most of all to the talkative extroverts. Who's a talkative extrovert here? Okay, one or two or three. Who's a quieter introvert? Okay, so this doesn't really apply to us over much. I think it really means, make, if you're an introvert, make your words count. Make your words count. To tell an introvert to speak less is great. Okay, I needn't say anything, yeah? But maybe speak a little bit more. I was an introvert for about 45 years, okay? So, and I got rather fed up with people saying, come out of your shell. I did when I was ready, okay? It took quite a little while. But what does this mean in practice? So let's look at something where Jesus gets really to the heart of it. The next slide, please. That our words show the overflow of our heart. So what we say it comes out of our lips is actually an expression of what's already in our hearts. Yes? It's like, have you ever picked up a, a, an apple from a bowl of fruit and it's great on the outside, you pick it up and actually it's a bit brown and rotting inside and you kindly just put it in the compost bin or recycle bin or whatever. And we can be fine on the outside, but Jesus said what's inside is really what's, what matters. So he's really saying, work on the inside of your life, and then your words will be right. And there's a verse, Luke 6, 45. Good people bring good out of the good deposit, the good treasury stored in their heart. That's the key thing. Good people bring good out of the good deposit stored in their heart. Evildoers bring evil out of the evil deposit stored in their heart. I say this because words express the overspill of what is in the heart. Can you hear me right? Am I loud enough? Yeah? Okay. So what we say, so that means we, the, the implication of that is look at what's going on in your, in your heart. Work on that. Yeah, as well as, I don't put makeup on, but I mean as well as looking nice outside. Now, here's an example of, what's, of our church community, because we're really fortunate in having Josh and Katie as pastors, because their keynote is, is what Craig's already brought up today, just now is thankfulness, isn't it? And there's a positivity and a thankfulness. You do something and they say, thank you. You do something in some churches and they don't say anything, yeah? <laughs> but they say, thank you. And the general mood is one of kindness and thankfulness. Some groups of people you go to, there's a harsh, not, not talking about churches, but some groups there's a harshness, there's a criticism, 
I lead courses as part of my work. I went, once went to a company. I got there early, about half past eight, and the lady introducing uh, met me at the, at the uh, office door, said, oh, can I make you a cup of coffee? And before she said that, her colleague, or before she'd finished saying that, her colleague immediately said, you never make me a cup of coffee, in real angry terms. And it turned out there were two kind of opposing groups in that company, A and B, yeah? So there was a harshness, there was a criticism, a bitterness. So what's in our hearts is the key thing. What's in our hearts is the key thing. We'll come back to that towards the end. Again, the, the following up from this, then, we need to spend time in the Lord's presence. The example here is Mary. Mary sat at the Lord's feet, riveted as she listened to everything that Jesus said, drinking it all in deeply. She enjoyed spending time quietly with Jesus, listening closely to his teaching and wanting to learn from him. So she was, she's digesting the truths. In our terms, that's reading scripture, worshipping, praying. Uh, years ago, people used to talk about having a quiet time. That was the word it was used. And I remember reading uh, some leader's notes once that said, your quiet time will be continually attacked. Your quiet time will be continually attacked. The time we want to spend with God will be attacked, yeah? There'll always be things to do. Other things will seem more important. But we need, we need to keep that up because we know, we know if, we, if we miss a physical meal, we go hungry, yeah? If we miss spiritual food, we're going to go spiritually hungry. So coming on Sundays in the week, reading, meditating, praying, seeking God, worshipping. Psalm 46, verse 10, we may know that. Anyone know Psalm 46, verse 10? Be still and know that I am God. Other versions, other paraphrases have be quiet, even shut up. And dare I say at the moment, switch off your mobile phone and know that I'm God. Maybe. We need to guard and protect those times. So that's more, that's sort of talking about speaking less. Now let's come back to that listening more. Listening more, James 1.19. My dear brothers and sisters, each of you should pay attention to these matters. Be eager and quick to listen. Take time to listen to both God and people. Now we'll have a little role play, I think, to illustrate how not to listen, and maybe we'll go on from there. So Craig and you, Sandra, will help us with this. I'm you, Sandra. I'm going on holiday next week. Uh, and I thought it was all going to be all right in terms of uh, the sun and that, but I came out the door this morning and it was rainy. Um, you're good with these kind of things in terms of like, what, what do I need to pack for going on holiday? Uh, huh? What, what, what did you say? Oh, hi, Joe. Nice to see you. Yes, yes, come here. I'm, I'm, going, on hol- I'm going on holiday with you, Sandra. Uh, yeah. Oh, I told him not oh. to do that. Your sound is not like that in the slightest. <laughs> I'm the one that's like that. Okay, so what, what, what went wrong there? She wasn't listening. And how did we know she wasn't listening? She was on her phone, looking over Craig's shoulder, distracted, exactly. Not in the least bit interested. Yes? Should we do that again? The, the correct way. Sandra. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Craig. Yeah? 
I know you do these kind of things. So obviously this morning I came out the door and it was raining. I yeah. meant you going on holiday next week. Yeah. And I know you're good at like kind of planning and all these different kind sure, of things. Sure. Uh, what what do I need to be like bring in if it's gonna be like this? Please. Umbrella. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A a anything else at all? Went in dry clothes. Yeah. That's it. I miss me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, darling. Thank you, and thank you, Craig. So, kind of really simple example, but yeah? Aren't we all like that sometimes? Okay, you stand to put a phone away, and looked at Craig, yes? And there was, a, there was conversation going on. It wasn't missing out, it was, it was actually, um, there was conversation going on. Listening actually is quite hard work because there are distractions. There's other people, there's our phone, we need to, whatever. I think the key thing for me in listening, maybe this is just for me, but, or maybe it's just men, I don't know. When someone's talking, we can be not listening, not trying to understand what they're saying, but trying to work out what to say in reply. Okay, so instead of trying to understand, we think, how can I reply to that? That's not listening, that's working out what we, what we want to say. That's us at the center of the conversation, not them. That for me is one of the key things about this kind of active listening. And we can ask questions. In the shopping center here, I once talked to a lady who obviously had a Eastern European accent, came from Poland, I asked her about Poland, she wouldn't stop talking. There were trams and there was Marks and Spencers in this Polish city. It was, it was you know, I'd unlocked a little uh, her life. So asking questions, curious. I once took it to a stream and someone said, um, this is, is this a police interrogation? So uh, not too heavy on the questioning. And it's, it's sharing our lives, isn't it? It's sharing our lives as Craig did then and uh, Usandra's advice to take an umbrella. Maybe one of our politicians needs to be reminded of that. 1 Thessalonians 2.8, because we love you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives as well. And here's an interesting thing. We may not, after a conversation, we may not remember the details of what was said, but we remember how we feel. Yeah, we may not remember who said what, but we remember how we feel. Did I feel listened to? Or do I just not remember anything? I remember talking to a chap on a train uh, coming out of Marylebone uh, to, to Aylesborough, where we used to live. It was about five o'clock in the evening. I got into conversation with him. He just wouldn't stop talking. He, uh, he was um, going to discuss with his brother the finances of their restaurant. And it was quite a difficult uh, meeting they were going to have. And then he said, you're the first person I've talked to all day. This was five o'clock in the evening. So kind of stopping to take time to listen to individuals is what counts. And that was pre-COVID. I think since COVID, it's even more important. So listening shows that we care. Let's just look quickly at three areas. Preachers say that, don't they? That means they're going to go on for another 20 minutes, but we're okay. Let's look quickly at three areas, briefly. The first is encouraging others. Here's an verse in Isaiah 50, the picture of the, of, the, of the servant, not the suffering servant, that's another one of the servant songs. But the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The servant of the Lord here is attentive. There's a double listening going on. There's a listening to the Lord. Here it's early in the morning. He's storing up in his heart, or her heart, God's word. And then later in the day, he or she encounters someone who needs just that word because it's stored up in the heart a word that will sustain or encourage someone. Oh. 
Secondly, in talking about Jesus, so encouraging others, we store up that God, we store up God's word. And then secondly, talking about Jesus. The followers of Jesus who've been driven out of Jerusalem took every opportunity wherever they went to talk naturally about Jesus in their normal everyday conversations. They preached the word wherever they went. And this is a genuine, natural conversation. So Eusandra and I went to the Vineyard Leaders Conference in Nottingham in April, uh, and one of the sessions was on talking about Jesus. Now that's great, isn't it, going to a seminar on talking about Jesus, but actually the Lord wants you to put it into practice, yes? So I thought, okay, at the end of that, there have been two gentlemen there's the conference center at one end and there was our hotel at the other end and to get from one to the other you had to walk along a towpath by a canal and there were two men who were there in their narrow boats and we'd said hello to them or good morning and I knew maybe they'd be there on the way back <coughs> so they were on my heart so I, this is what I prayed this is not I wouldn't always encourage you to pray but this I'm just being honest with you this is what I prayed Lord, if you want me to say something to them, then may something unusual, like an ambulance siren going off, happen in the next two or three seconds. Okay, and about one second after I prayed that, an ambulance siren went off. Okay, so my next prayer was, A, what do I say? B, may they not be there. But we got near them, and I find it difficult to start up a conversation like that. Starting, starting and finishing, particularly starting. So as we drew near, I noticed that they had some German beer mugs. Two, you know, big ones. And I know a bit of German, and there was writing on it, so I could read that, and that was kind of an opener. So we had a conversation for five minutes. I, don't, I didn't bring them to Christ, okay? That's not the end in, in, in one and a half minutes. But I did share life with them, and, and we talked with them. Okay, Bennett got lively at the word German. Um, and one called himself a Catholic, the other called himself a Christian. One of them had been to the church where the conference was being held for a wedding. And I gave them one of the... Uh, I'm editing my way through the New Testament and the, uh, John's Gospel. We prayed with them, and if we're there next year, we'd certainly stop and chat with them. So it was kind of a natural opportunity to be one link in a chain. If we put it like that, one link in a chain. There's a saying, isn't there? Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. So we're to live out the gospel, acts of kindness, and then our words will be listened to as well. So praying for people shows that we care, shows that we care about them, shows that we believe in God, shows that we care about them in, as individuals to bring their individual needs to the creator of the universe. And that, that's an act of kindness in itself that I think has an impact on people. So encouragement, evangelism, and then thirdly, personal conversation. Next slide, please. Make sure that the words you speak are always attractive and encouraging. Not bland or dull, but insightful, appropriate, and holding your listeners' attention. Then you'll know how to respond effectively to each person as they need. This is really about not drawing attention to ourselves. This is focusing on others. Because we all have moments of pride where we want to be recognized, struggling to put others first. And it's good to examine our motives in what we say and what we do. Here's a really crass example of that. I'm looking at the clock uh, behind you, ahead of me, and it was about five minutes wrong, uh, or three minutes wrong, a few weeks ago, and I got up and changed it. Now, what I could have done, I didn't, but what I could have done was, say, oh, look at that clock. Um, oh, isn't it good that it says the right time? <laughs> I just changed the battery. No? 
I didn't do that. I, I tried not to think that even, but I, I, I didn't do that. But, you know, we can subtly try to um, draw attention to ourselves. So the question really is, as we, we draw to a close, is are we looking to present this successful, always sort of nice Sunday smile, everything's in my heart and everything in my life is absolutely perfect, this manicured image of ourselves, or, or, or are we prepared to be our true selves and at times yet say, you know, how are you? Actually, I'm having a lousy week, not just fine, thank you. And putting others first in our conversation. We may want to look good in the eyes of others. At times we need to be humble in our speech, not trying to impress others with our words. What really matters is what God thinks of us, not what others do. So finally, to follow up, Katie's encouraging us to think of two practical ways to follow up, and here they are. When we're listening, when we're talking and listening conversation, I think ask ourselves, am I really listening? Or am I, th particularly if I'm a bloke, and this is me, I know, am I, thinking, am I thinking more, how can I reply, rather than trying to understand the other person? And then secondly, you may have come across these expansion here of, before we speaking ask, is something helpful? Is it kind? Is it going to be encouraging someone? Is it going to build them up? Is it, going to, is it kind? Is it pleasant? Or is it a bit shady and a bit uh, inconsiderate? I used to write dictionaries, or I still write dictionaries, and in, in, in olden days we used to have card index files, do you remember that? And someone had written on the word inconsiderate, in fact I know who it was, inconsider inconsiderate, and it said, my wife says I'm this. <laughs> I know the bloke, I don't know his wife, but I know the bloke, and it's kind of haunted me over the years. So, is it considerate? Does it show understanding? Is it necessary, perhaps for another time? Or maybe not at all? And that's it, that's simplicity in speech.